All right, hey everybody, Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, 1971, a little New York Mets action taking you to Chicago and Wrigley Field. We got Gary Gentry going here against uh, Bill Hands, a righty, two righties. In the lineups for New York, Harrelson, Marshall, Milner, Cranepool, Jorgensen, and Garrett, and Dyer, Foley, and Gentry. This is September 22nd, 1971, about a week left of games. Then we'll do the stats. For the Cubs, it's James, Popovich, and Williams, Burke, Santo, and Heiser, and Kessinger, Fernandez, and Hans. Let's do it. Fall Classic Baseball plays super easy. As you can see, most of everything is right off the cards. It's a 63. It's a blank. So we go to the pitcher. Did we roll? We did not roll for the pitcher. We'll use that 12. So he'll be a B. And, uh, well, usually I do the, the Mets first. And then hands will be an A. So he got lucky there. And that's 63 under A. It'll be an out. What kind of an out? The 3 says it's a... Uh, he's batting lefty because he's a switch hitter against a righty, so he'll bounce it to the first baseman. That is Burke on the ball and makes the catch. And uh, all right, let me just take a quick look at something. Second, just bring that pat. And let's see, a little more dad on um, Burke. Good, Pat Burke. All right. Dave Marshall, so I was getting his name right. Just double checking that. It's a 22, and that's going to be a fly ball driven to right center field. And right there is Heiser. Route number two, and Milner with a 64. That'll be an out. The 20 is a line out to second base, and that retires the side. So three up, three down. Easy inning for Bill Hans, who won 12 and lost 18 that year, that season in the 71 season. Cleo James against Gary Gentry, and Gentry we said it was going to be a B. <clears throat> So Gentry will be a B, and let's see. We look at the batter first. It's a 32, and a B is going to be a 1-8 to eight double, but it's a 12, so it's a pop-up. And that's the catcher calling for it right in front of the pitcher's mound. One down. Smooth this slide this over just a little bit more. So we get the pitchers in there. There we go. We got both pitchers in there. All right, one out. Popovich. Paul Popovich is a switch hitter. Bats lefty against the, the righty Gentry. And that's going to be a 36, which will be an out. The 15 is a batting lefty, so that'll be bounce out to the first base. Taking it himself is... Crane pool. Two out, and here's Billy Williams with a 64. A 64 will be a ball hit right back to the mound, picked up by Gentry. He throws out Williams. Three up, three down. So easy first inning for both pitchers. Ed Crane pool leading off the top of the second inning, and Crane pool with an 11, and that'll be a fly out. Center field. Easy play for the center fielder, Cleo James, one down. Here's Mike Jorgensen with a 34, and a 34 against an A will be bounced up the middle and through for a base hit. So the first hit of the game, Mike Jorgensen stands at first base. Here's Wayne Garrett. He's a lefty hitter. That's a 55, and that is line for a base hit. It rips one to right center field, and uh, the runner will hold. Hit so hard that uh, Jorgensen had to hold up to make sure the line drive was not caught. 
So first and second, here comes Duffy Dyer. Pitch from hands, and that's a 66, and that's going to be a drive. It's going to be over the center fielder's head and hit off the base of the wall. With two out, there would be an assist. Otherwise, it's going to be a double one-run scores, and they hold up Garrett. So it's going to be an RBI for Dyer, and it's one nothing Mets. Second and third, one out. Enfield's going to be playing in. Here's Tim Foley. And that's going to be a 33, and that's going to be bounced up the middle and through for a base hit. Let's see. Run around second. There will be an assist here to center field. Center fielder is James. And Cleo James is going to make a perfect throw right on the money. And he throws out uh, on the single. Garrett scores, but Dyer is going to be thrown out 8-2, to two, and the batter is going to go to second base. So it's 2 nothing Mets, but there's two outs now. So there's a play at the plate, and Cleo James throws out Duffy Dyer. And now it's Garrett Gentry. Here's a pitch from Hans of 15, and it's a strikeout to end the inning. So two runs on four hits. And we move to the bottom of the second inning. All right, here's Pat Burke. And that's a 42. 42 will be ball four. And Burke walks to first. Here comes Ron Santo. Good power, 21 home runs. That's a 44, and that is ripped to center field. Runner will stop at second base. First and second here. For the Cubs in the bottom of the second against Gary Gentry. Gene Heiser, lefty hitter, 41. That's ball four. That's going to load the bases. So the bases are loaded. It's Heiser at first, Santo at second, Burke at third. Here comes Don Kessinger and feels back looking for the double play. And that's a 65, a home run, but a minus 10. That'll be a zero. So that's going to be. A one type of out. It's a ball hit right back to the mound. He may get the runner at home. He is a strong arm, so he will get a it, – it'll be a fielder's choice going one to two. Everybody moves up. There's one out. Two, still two nothing. Again, the infield's halfway looking for that double play. Here's Frank Fernandez. He's got good power. Did four home runs and 41 at bats, and that's a 16, which will be a one to five base on balls. It's going to be a 16 with the bases loaded, so it's not a base on balls, it's too high for that. But a 16 with the bases loaded is going to be a strong arm shortstop. Harrelson is not, he's an average arm shortstop, unfortunately, for the Mets. So it's going to go, it's going to go six four field is choice, a run will score. So it's an RBI for Fernandez. He drives in Santo. And it's going to be first and third now for the pitcher, Bill Hans. So Gentry checks in with a dire for the sign. He sets and deals. And that's a 35. That'll be a blank. And the 35 will be an out. It'll be bounced out to third. Throws throw to first. Throws out Hans. And that retires the side. One out. Two out. And then, of course, um, the third out. So uh, one run comes in on one hit and a couple of walks. And we move to the top of the third. It's two to one Mets. Got 100 seasons. You got all the players. Here's Buddy Harrelson, a 22, and that is ball four. Plus, Buddy will get a chance to steal his 16 rating, 16 there. But we have to look at the catcher, catcher Fernandez. Frank Fernandez is going to be a strong arm, so that's going he's going to throw out Harrelson. Throws out Harrelson, two, four, one away. Dave Marshall now with a 52 and a 17. That's going to be a 
a second baseman play who bobbles it, but still throws out Marshall. And we'll just check double check Popovich at second base. Yeah, he's good. And uh, next up is John Milner with a 32, and a 32 will be a fly ball to right. On the run is Heiser. Will he catch up to it? Yes, he does. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits, a walk. None left. We move to the bottom of the third. Cleo James, top of the order. Gary Gentry. And that's a 25, which will be a fly ball center field. Drifting under it is Jorgensen, and he makes the catch. One down. Popovich with a 64, and that is a bouncer to second base. Sidearm. Uh, Foley sidearms at the first for out number two. And here's Billy Williams. Billy Williams with a 54. That's a 54 chart. So it's a wild look, and it's a ground ball to the pitcher who knocks it down. That's 16. Will be too high for an error, and throwing him out is Gentry, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits. <clears throat> Excuse me. We move to the top of the fourth. Ball Classic Baseball plays super easy. As you've seen, I've just used some fast action cards a couple of times. Here's Eddie Cranepool leading off. He flat out the center. And Cranepool with a error check. A third base error. It's a two base error. It's a nine. Let's see where Santo is on that. Santo has a five, so there will be no error. It's a ball that's high, but nice stretch by the first baseman, Burke. So it's a G5. Next up. Mike Jorgensen with a 24, and that's a hit by pitch. That's pretty high, 1 to 9, minus 2, 1 to 7, but we roll a 20. That's line and caught by the second baseman, Popovich. Left his feet, went up for it, and brought it back down. So Jorgensen hit it right on the screws, but right at the second baseman. Here's Wayne Garrett with two out, and that's a 62, and that will be a fly ball center field. Right there is James, and that retires the side. Three up, three down. <clears throat> Bottom of the fourth, two to one Mets. It is Gary Gentry versus Bill Hands, 1971 baseball. Pat Burke with a 45, and that'll be an out. It'll be a bounce out to third. Garrett throws him out. Ron Santo now, who's single and scored a run, and he rips one to left center. He's on with a single, so he's two for two today. Here's Gene Heiser. Pitch to Heiser. That's going to be a 23. Strike three. Curveball gets him. Two out. And Don Kessinger will hit the field his choice. And that's a 52. That's an error check on the shortstop, but Harrelson is, has a very low error number. He won the gold glove in 71, so his error number is super low. This won't be an error. He'll get to that ball. Yeah, it's a five, and that's a seven, so it's above his error number. So we'll six four fielder's choice down the inning. No runs, a hit, one left, and we move to top of the fifth. Game plays very very quickly as well. If you like that, but if you like strat, you'll feel very comfortable. The pace is very similar to those games. Once you get into the flow, thirty three, and that's going to be banged up the middle and through for a base hit for Duffy Dyer. He's on it first. Tim Foley now. Here's a pitch to Foley. That's a 34, and that is line for a base hit to left. See how far the runner goes on this one. He will hold up. So it's first and second, and squaring away is Gentry. So Gentry's going to try to bunt them over. See, it's a five, so we need five or less on both dice, and that's a strikeout. So he fails. He bunts, bunts it foul. The two-strike pitch bunts the two-strike pitch foul. Strikeout here's Buddy Harrelson. He's swinging away in a 54. That's a 54 check with runners on base. It's going to be a one. That's going to be most likely a pass ball, and it is a pass ball. Both runners will move up. So both runners move up on the pass ball by, by uh, Fernandez. Second and third. Going to play the infield in in a 2-1 to game. Here's a pitch, and that's a 13, which will be an out and a 16 with the infield in. That's going to be by the diving shortstop. And one run, I believe one run scores on this. Stopping a third will be Foley. 
So it's first and third. And it's Dave Marshall. They're playing back for the double play of 31. And that's bounced up the middle. And that is through for a base hit. Another run scores. And F or A go to third. Harrelson's fast, so he will go to third. So Bill Hands is getting getting pounded a little bit here in the top of the fifth innings, giving up uh, four hits so far, four singles. And here comes John Milner. First and third. Again, they're looking for the double play. And they may not get out. They're not going to get it. That's a strikeout. Curveball gets Milner. Two out. And it's right now it's four to one. Mets scored two runs in the second and two runs now in the fifth. Here's Steady Eddie Crane pull pitch from hands. And that's a 23. And that'll be a fly ball to right on the run is Heiser. And Heiser comes up with it. Two runs on four hits. Mets lead it four to one. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Frank Fernandez leading off against Gentry, and that's a 51. That's an error check with a six on the second baseman. Second baseman is Foley. Foley's error number will be nine, so he boots it. It's going to be an E4 on Foley. Bill Hands now is going to swing away. That's 31, and that's a strikeout. So Gentry gets Hands. One down. Here's Cleo James. That's a snake eyes and a one to three single. A ten. No, that's a hit by pitch. So James gets plunked. And that puts that pushes Fernandez to second. Tying run is at the plate now. Four to one score here in the bottom of the fifth. Pop of a switch hitter bang from the left side. That's going to be a 46 and a five. Just misses a double roll of run scores. It's foul back. It's pull foul. Into the right field corner and just foul. Just miss being a double at least. All right. And that's a 44. And that is ball four. That's going to load the bases. So interesting inning. You've had a an error to start the inning and a hit by pitch and now a walk. And that loads them up. Tying run is in a first. Go ahead run is at the plate. Billy Williams, 301 hitter with 28 home runs. So Gary Gentry better proceed with caution. One out, bottom of the fifth, bases loaded. Billy Williams, bang from the left side versus Gary Gentry. Here's the pitch, and that's a 54. That's going to be a 54 chart check with runners on base. That's a 10. Gentry is a really good control. Didn't throw many wild pitches, so that's going to be a ball that's blocked by Dyer. Dyer Dyer's uh, pass ball rating is also good at two. So the, the, uh, the number we rolled just did not. Um, either produce a walk or a pass, uh, a wild pitch or a pass ball on that. Billy Williams again. Here's a pitch. And that's a 13, which will be a pop-up. And this is to the right side. First baseman. Crane pull right there for out number two. And another lefty, Pat Burke. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a ground out. Here's a pitch from Gentry. And that's going to be a 44, and luckily that's going to be lined right at the center fielder to end the inning. So no runs. The, they leave the bases loaded on a hit-by-pitch, a walk, and an error. And we move to the top of the six. So Gary Gentry just got out of that very, very tight spot. And we move to the top of the six. Scores 4-1 to one Mets. Here's Mike Jorgensen leading it off against Bill Hans. That's going to be a 34, and that is pulled down the line and past the diving first baseman for a base hit single. And Jorgensen's on it first. Garrett will square to bunt, and it's uh, oh, it could be a could be a fielder. Well, it's, it is a fielder's choice, and it's going to be a uh, no. It's going to miss being a double play, so it's going to be a one six fielder's choice. So the bunt fails, and Garrett's on it first. Here is Duffy Dyer now with a 64 and a 17. That's lifted to left field. Under it is Williams and makes the catch. Two down. Back to first goes Garrett. And this is a 23 for Foley. And that's a strikeout to end the inning. No runs. One hit, one left. We move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Now, I keep track 
batter's faced. He's gone 18. He's almost gone 27. He's gone 18. He's on the way to 27. So both players can at least go 27. Hands can go 34, and Gentry can go 31. Um, and let's move on to the bottom of the six, Santo, Heiser, and Kessinger. Here's a pitch to Santo from Gentry with a 34, and that is a fly to left field. John Milner, one down. Heiser next with a 46 and a 20. And that's going to be a wildest section with the bases empty, wildest section. Catcher interferes. Can't do catcher interference and batter safe at first base. So we're going to do an E2 and runner on at first. Here's Don Kessinger, the pitch, and that's a 66, and that's going to be a drive down the line into the right field corner. And after it is Marshall, who misplays the carom, and scoring is Heiser, and into third base with a stand up triple is Don Kessinger. RBI triple for Don Kessinger. And the score now is four to two. One out, run around third. And Mets are going to allow the run for the out. Here's Frank Fernandez with a 51 and a one. Struck him out. And Gary Gentry blows a fastball by Frank Fernandez. And here's Bill Hens. Um, <clears throat> sixth inning, bottom of the sixth inning. Score is four to two. Hands can still go a while. We're going to just let him, yeah. you know what? All right, it's going to be pinch hitter Brock Davis with two outs and a runner on third base here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So that's it for Hands. He went six, gave up four runs. And all runs well. Um... Let's double check. All runs were, no, three out of the four were earned. And he got uh, nine hits, so nine hits. And walks, one walk, four strikeouts. And that's the day's concluded for Bill Hans. And here is Brock Davis. And the pitch from Gentry. And that's going to be a 43 and a 43. A 1 to 10 base on balls, but no, that's bounced to first. And Crampo will take it, step on the bag, and that retires the side. So one run comes in on the one hit, the triple, and the error. And uh, we move to the top of the seventh inning. We're going to have a new pitcher. And who's that going to be? It is going to be, let's see, somebody who, Colborn, Jim Colborn, will be pitching here. Let's find him quickly and then roll for his stuff for the day. There he is, just past him. All right. And we'll roll for his stuff. We'll write him in. And he will have C stuff. He will be facing Gary Gentry. Here's the pitch. And that's a 65. It'll be bounced to third. Actually short. Shortstop gets it. Kessinger and throws out Gentry for the first out here in the top of the seventh. Scores 4-2. to two, New York Mets. September 22nd game. There's about a seven days left in the season. And that's going to be a hit by pitch one, two, minus four. That's way high. 11, that's lined to second base. Caught. Ripped to center field, but Popovich came out of nowhere and robbed Harrelson of his second hit of the game. He's one for three today. Here comes Marshall, who's one for three. That's going to be a 36, and that will be bounced up the middle and threw into center field for a base hit. A two out single for Dave Marshall against Colborne. And John Milner, John Milner with a 43, and that will be fly out left field. 
right there is Williams. Puts it away. No runs. One hit. And we move to the bottom of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch. Take me out to the ball game time. Here's uh, Cleo James leading off. That's a 53. So that's going to be a range check. And against the right fielder, we roll the six. He should be able to get to that. Who's the right fielder? It's Dave Marshall. Dave Marshall for the Mets in right field is a four range. So he does not get to that. And that's going to be a single that drops in front of Marshall. Did not get a good read on that ball off the bat. So Cleo James is on at first. Here is Popovich, Paul Popovich, bats from the left side. Pitch, it's a 23, and that will be an out. 19 is lifted to right. Racing in is Marshall, and he gets there for the out. Back to first is James. Here's Billy Williams with a 15 and a fly ball. This time it's to left field, and John Milner puts it away. Two down. Pat Burke. Pat Burke with a 41. That's ball four. Puts runners on first and second now. Tying run is on at first in a 4-2 to two ball game here in the bottom of the seventh, and it's Ron Santo. Ron Santo has some power. So he, Gary Gentry better uh, proceed with caution. Here's the pitch, and that's going to be a 44, and that's lined to center field for a base hit. And let's see, uh, W arm and center. Who's my center fielder? He's an A arm. So they're going to have to hold up. It's going to be the bases loaded here. Um, Jorgensen in center field for the Mets is an A, so they're going to hold up. Bases loaded, two outs, and here comes Gene Heiser. Gene Heiser batted 207, six hits and 29 at bats. You get every player. Going to let him bat. He's 0 for, 0 for 2. Walked and reached on an error, uh, a uh, catch interference. Here's a pitch. Gene Heiser with the bases loaded, and that's 33, and that's ball four, and a run. That'll force in a run, making the score four to three now, and the bases are loaded again with Burke moving to third, Santo at second, and Heiser, and this may be it for Gentry. Actually, Gentry, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So he is done for the day for sure. Let him go an extra uh, batter. But they got on base anyway, so it didn't matter. All right, so uh, we're going to go to the bullpen for the Mets. Let's see who we grab. It's going to be Tug McGraw. It's going to face the switch hitter Kessinger. It's going to spin him around. He'll bat from the right side. There are two outs. Bases are loaded. Score is 4-3. to three. Mets. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Tug McGraw checks in with Duffy Dyer for the sign. He sets and deals. And that's going to be a 52. It's going to be an error check, but that 15 is very high. But it is against the pitcher, and that's a 9, so the 15 is higher than that. So there will not be an, an error. Tug McGraw picks it up over to first, and that retires the side. So one run comes in on a couple of hits and a couple of walks, and the score is 4-3 to three as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Playing fall classic baseball, as you can see. No chart lookups. Everything's off the cards. And uh, you get a little bit of everything happening. Eddie Cranepool leading off. He's 0 for 3. He's flied out a couple of times and grounded out once. Jim Colburn is still in there, but we're going to have a short leash on him. This is a very close game, and he does not have a great card. C gives up a lot of hits. Had a 2.0 whip, so he allows a runner, and we're going to pull him. And this will be an out, I believe, and it will be. It will be a ball hit right back to Colborne. And that is out number one. Next up is Mike Jorgensen. That's from the left side with a 26 against a righty. It's going to be banged up the middle, and that is into center field for a base hit. And that's going to be it for Colborne. We're going to, going to switch. All right, so a couple of things went on here. We brought in Larry Gura, the lefty, to face the righty to face the lefty Garrett and uh, they're going to pull Garrett and bring in Ted Martinez 
who bats from the right side. And he will stay in to play third base. Run around first, one out. Here's a pitch from Gura. That's going to be a 45, and that will be, ah, we didn't roll for Gura. We'll use that. It'll be a C of 45. Will be a fielder's choice, 6-4. Let's see what kind of arm Kessinger has. You know, he has a weak arm, so that's going to be just a fielder's choice. So Martinez is on at first base. And up comes Duffy Dyer. Duffy Dyer today is actually has two hits. He's got a double, an RBI, and a single. Two for three. Here's a pitch. Dyer, 23, and that's he struck him out. Gura gets him with a curveball. No runs. One hit, one left. We move to the bottom of the eighth. New third baseman, that's going to be Martinez. Tug McGraw is in there for the Mets. He is a B-stuff pitcher. The Mets with four runs, 11 hits, and two errors, while the Cubs have three runs, five hits, and no errors. Here's Don. Nope, it's actually... Frank Fernandez. Here's a pitch. And that is a 34, which will be a line out to second base. And we had a double. So uh, actually, Yeah, we, we had a double switch, so batting for the this is going to be, uh, starts with a C, uh, Callison, Johnny Callison. He will be batting against the lefty McGraw. Actually, I should have pulled a, a righty. Let's, let's just make that correction here. Um, hold on one sec. Yeah, the pinch hitter is not Callison, but Jim Hickman who went out in the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Mets leading at four to three. Tug McGraw versus Hickman came in in a double switch, and that's going to be a forty-one. That's ball four, so it's a one-out walk, putting the tying run on at first. And it can't get much better than this game. Cleo James now. And we're going to try a hit and run with Cleo James. And there goes Hickman. That's going to be a five. That's going to be bounced out to the first baseman, moving Hickman into scoring position. So it works. Hit and run moves him up. And here comes Paul Popovich. Hanging from the right side with two outs and one on. The tying run at second base in Hickman. Hickman does not have great speed, but he is adequate. So here's a pitch from Tug McGraw, and that's a 32, which will be an out. Popped up. Catcher in fair grounds makes the catch, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, a walk, one left, and we move to the top of the ninth inning in a 4-3 to three ball game. September 22nd, 1971. Where were you? This is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, playing fall classic baseball, 70s. All right, it's going to be Tim Foley, Larry Gurr again. Not a great card, lots of hits. He had a 2.3 whip. Here's a pitch, and Foley will reach on a single. A little check swing bloop that drops in in front of the left fielder, Williams. Uh, McGraw will square away to bunt. He will bat. And it is a good bunt. McGraw with a bunt rating of, let's see, what is his bunt rating? Bunt rating of a should be good. We rolled pretty low on that. There's a couple of ways I can check. 
Doug McGraw, his bunt rating is a five. So it's a good bunt. It's to the first baseman. And Foley moves into scoring position for that insurance run. Let's see if the Mets can get it home. But House and one for three is up with an RBI single. Here's the pitch from Gura. Actually, you know what? We're going to go to the bullpen once again. All right, it's going to be Joe Decker coming in for the Cubs. Again, another not very good pitcher with a 1.9 whip. But what can I do? He rolled the C stuff besides. So the Mets may be able to score a run here. Here goes. Here's the pitch to Harrelson, who bats from the left side with a 61. And that's going to be a strikeout. So that's a big strikeout for Joe Decker. And here's uh, Dave Marshall, a lefty. Pitch from Decker. And that is 46, which will be a ballpark uh, result with a three. And that is a... Uh, he does have a double, so that's going to be a drive. And that's going to be one hop off the wall. One run will score. Makes it a 5-3 to three ball game. So RBI double, and that's the third hit of the day for Marshall. Drives in number 8, or the 8th place batter. And here comes uh, John Milner with two outs and one on. All right. Here's a pitch to Milner. Joe Decker with a 52 and a 19. That's going to be an error check. But that 19 is very high. Third baseman Santo will get it. And that'll end the inning. So one run comes in on two hits. The double, the big hit by Dave Marshall. And it's a 5-3 to three ball game. We go to the bottom of the ninth. And let's see if Tug McGraw can finish this off. It's going to be Billy Williams, Pat Burke, and Ron Santo in the bottom of the ninth for the Cubs. Here's a pitch, and that is a 53 with a 20. That's going to be a range, a range check, and that'll drop in in front of the right fielder, Dave Marshall. So it's a leadoff single here in the ninth for Billy Williams. And Mark McGraw still has plenty. He can go 12 batters. Here's Pat Burke. And that's a 63, and that'll be a strikeout. Next up is Ron Santo. Pitch from McGraw, 35, and that'll be strike two. Strike three, excuse me. Second strike out of the inning. And here's Gene Heiser. Well, actually, the pitcher's up, so we're going to bring in a pinch hitter. Okay. Picking up a bat is Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub. This, I believe, is his last season in baseball, and uh, he will be batting against uh, Tug McGraw here in the bottom of the ninth with the tying run. Well, at the plate, Banks will be the tying run. Here goes. Tug McGraw checks in with Dyer for the sign and deals. And that's going to be a 22, which will be a ground ball to short. Picked up by Harrison, goes the short way, and the ball game is over. Mets pull it out. No runs, one hit. They win it by a score of 5-3. to three. And it's going to be 13 hits, two errors on the Mets. No errors for the Cubs, but only six hits. So it's 5-13-2 and two against three, six, and none. The victory is going to go to Gentry. The loss is going to go to Hands. And Bank tend to a field his choice, 6-4. So McGraw is going to pick up his 11th save of the year. Gentry improves his record to 14 and 10. And uh, let's see. Three hits for Marshall, three hits for Jorgensen. Two hits for Dyer and three hits for Foley. It was just a terrible pitching staff for the Cubs. Every pitcher I brought in was just the pits. Most of their good pitchers have been used up already for the season, so I was kind of going with you know the 
latest guys that they brought up from the minors. Um, Gary Gentry lowers his ERA to 410, faced 33 batters. You have five walks and five hits and 6.2 innings of work. The Mets improve their record to 91 and 64. The Cubs are 85 and 70. Still, the Mets are nowhere near the Pirates, who are basically have, uh, I think, 100 wins by now. And that's all. This is Fall Classic Baseball. I'm down to the last week, and I'll ha- be having the stats next week, and then we'll be playing a couple other games this weekend as well. This is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, and thanks for watching my 71 replay game. Take care.